Hi, it's a cartoon version of Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It is February the 8th, 2024. Let's just throw out some random thoughts on boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, there's been talk, and that's all it is right now, talk about a possible fight between Gervonta Davis <laughs> and Conor Benn. Now, there are two things I think gamblers need to think about here if it happens. The first is Davis's back foot. I don't believe Conor Benn has a commensurate back foot. The fight to see Davis's back foot in is his fight against Isaac Cruz. Now Davis does a masterful job in that fight, but I'm not sure who won that fight. Understand my position on it. That's a location fight. If that fight was fought in Cruz's backyard, Cruz would have been awarded the decision. Right? I was doing research uh, on an upcoming Cruz fight and looked at that fight again. Right, If you strip away the idea of who was favored going into the fight, if you just view the fight neutrally, I believe you're going to reach the conclusion that that fight was too close to call. But more importantly, as in the Thomas the Hitman Hearns, Ray Leonard fight from a generation ago, the big news in that fight was actually Davis's ability to pivot on his back foot to show you a part of his game that most of us did not know he had. Understand, most of the time you see Davis, he's a hunter. He's a puncher. He's getting knockouts. In that fight, Cruz, who knows how to be front foot in the pocket, gets Davis onto his back foot. And what we learned in that fight is Davis knew how to operate. Davis is a major boxer, right? Look at his amateur record. It's outstanding. Davis, as highly thought of as he is, is actually better than advertised. Now, Conor Ben, there's a lot of issues with him. Let's be up front here, right? There are issues over some of the PED tests he's taken in the past, right? He had things in his body we wouldn't expect people to have in their body, right? Female fertility drug type things. So let me just say, Connor Ben, there's an issue on, in fact, Let's just say he's being investigated for PED use. The Chris Algieri fight is interesting because I've seen Algieri in against punchers where he could not take the punch, right? Look at the Chris Algieri, Errol Spence fight. But I've never seen Algieri, who himself has questions about what happened in that fight. I've never seen Algieri look as overwhelmed physically as he did in the Conor Ben fight. I want people to revisit that knockdown. That knockdown looks odd to me. That's the word I'll use, odd. Where Algieri gets hit in the face and looks like he's been shot. Right? Algieri doesn't look that bad, although he gets knocked down multiple times in the Manny Pacquiao fight, it was clear that Algieri had been hit with a shot from Conor Ben that was outsized. Now, Conor Ben just didn't put up that level of highlight in his last fight against Dobson, the New Yorker from the Bronx. Now, Understand, New York City has a vibrant boxing culture. I have no doubt that Dobson has been in the ring in gyms in New York City with some uh, very tough opponents. 
right? New York's kind of like Philadelphia. By the way, in my favorites folder, I have an interview of all-time great Michael Spinks, where Spinks talks candidly about fighting people like Dwight Cowie at Joe Fraser's gym in Philly. Right, you find out that Spinks was fighting heavyweights, Rex Cobb and people like that at Joe Fraser's gym in Philly. So by the time he's in the ring against the Larry Holmeses of the world, the Dwight Cowies of the world, right, the Jerry Cooneys of the world, well, Michael Spinks had already been sparring with major heavyweights, right? Cowie, for those who don't know, is in the Hall of Fame. Right? When, you know, that fight at the time was billed as a major fight, when the guys had actually been sparring already. Now, I have no doubt that Dobson, in New York City, right, has been sparring with serious fighters. Right? I have no doubt about that at all. But the reality is Dobson is in his 30s already. Right? If Conor Ben was the guy who destroyed Chris Algieri, one would have expected better highlights from his fight against Pete Dobson. At a minimum, he has faster feet than Dobson. For those who don't know, Conor Ben has faster feet than Gervonta Davis. But Conor Ben doesn't have Davis's back foot. Let's just say, because of the issues surrounding the investigation of Conor Ben's past drug tests, I think it's a fair question to ask how his punching power, which looked prodigious against Chris Algieri, wasn't able to close the show against Pete Dobson. Well, Conor Ben, if he can get back to the punching power he showed against Chris Algieri, he'd have a chance against Gervonta Davis. Right? But that's a big ask, isn't it? That's a big ask, isn't it? Let me just say, if a boxing match were to break out between Conor Ben and Gervonta Davis, I would go with Davis, right? Conor Ben's only shot against Davis would be to stay outside the pocket and to fight the kind of ambush style that he fought against Chris Algieri. Conor Ben, unlike his dad, Nigel Ben, can't set up shop in the pocket and trade shots, right? The other issue regarding a Conor Ben Gervonta Davis fight is the fact that there's a weight difference, right? Conor Ben was actually entertaining fighting um, Chris Eubank, a middleweight. Granted, they were talking about a catch weight, but understand the catch weight would have been at 157, right? 157. Understand that Gervonta Davis of late has been fighting at 136. Wasn't that the catch weight for his Ryan Garcia fight? Now, you and I know Gervonta Davis did fight Mario Barrios, has actually fought at weights higher than 136. But he's not the size of Conor Ben. There would be a size gap between the two men. But let's be clear here. Gervonta Davis, pound for pound, is one of the hardest punchers in the sport of boxing. Davis was able to stop Mario Barrios. Right? He was able to stop Mario Barrios. Understand, I believe Davis would bring his punching power with him. The question is, how much does Conor Ben actually weigh between fights? Right? If he's down around welterweight between fights, okay, maybe a Conor Ben Gervonta Davis fight's doable. But if he walks around at 157 between fights, you're talking about a sizable size gap. Right? Take a hard look at the possibility of a Gervonta Davis Conor Ben fight. If it happens, I'll congratulate both men because it would show me that neither man is that tethered to a weight class or to the idea of just fighting for titles, right? At the end of the day, at the end of your career, fans are going to look back and they're going to remember the big fights, not necessarily the title fights, right? They're going to remember 
when you were in the ring against major opponents. I mentioned Michael Spinks earlier. Think about it. He fought Larry Holmes. He fought Jerry Cooney. He fought Mike Tyson. He didn't beat Tyson, but he got paid for the effort, right? Understand, Michael Spinks wasn't a heavyweight for that long. He's really a Hall of Famer because of a great career at light heavyweight. The fact that he jumped up to fight major heavyweights in fight after fight, two fights against Larry Holmes, right, tells you all you need to know about him. That would be like Arthur Beterbiev, current light heavyweight champion, or Dmitry Bivol, current light heavyweight champion, jumping up to heavyweight and then fighting major sluggers, right? The equivalent of two matches against Larry Holmes. The analogy today to Larry would be Tyson Fury. In other words, Larry was the man who, whatever other belts were out there, you knew was the heavyweight champion, right? Larry was the standard at heavyweight. I would say today that's Tyson Fury. Right? Jerry Cooney was that big, brutal puncher at heavyweight. He'd be Zhili Zhang today. Right? Just imagine Bevel fighting Tyson Fury, Zhili Zhang, then finishing it off with what looks like the future. We'll say big baby Jared Anderson. Right? That's what Michael Spinks did. He only lost once. That was to Mike Tyson. Right, once in his entire career. Right, the Beevil analogy, the Paterbiev analogy, is actually appropriate because they, like Michael Spinks, were unbeaten or are unbeaten right now. They would be unbeaten if they were then to venture up to heavyweight. Understand, we've been socialized a little bit differently than folks in the 1980s. We feel that jump from light heavy to heavyweight is simply too big because since the 80s, the cruiserweight division has matured. You even have a bridgerweight division now. But yet, that's the jump that Michael Spinks and Roy Jones made. Right? To close here, let me just say I look forward to Gervonta Davis's next fight. I should call him Wahid. He's changed his name. My apology here. I look forward to Wahid's next fight. If it's against Conor Ben, I'll be interested in that fight depending on how the PED investigation goes. Right? Conor Ben did not bring a big punch with him to his last fight. Right? The punch Conor Ben had against Chris Algieri looked different to me than the punch he had against Dobson, right? Dobson, granted, starts the last fight cautiously, but it's apparent in that fight by the fifth round that Dobson figured out that he wasn't at imminent danger of getting knocked out. I don't think he would have been able to reach that conclusion if he were fighting the Conor Ben who showed up against Chris Algieri, right? I'm entitled to my opinion. I'm not claiming to have knowledge of any facts, of any wrongdoing. Let's just say Conor Ben's big punch wasn't there, right? If you're going to fight Wahid, the former Gravante Davis, you're going to have to bring a big punch with you, with some boxing skills, right? I'll concede Conor Ben has much faster feet than Gravante Davis. There is a possibility that if he fights a Sergio Martinez type of ambush fight, in fact, let's make it current, if he fights a Jamel Charlo type of ambush fight where he's outside, jumps inside, throws a combination, jumps back outside, there's a chance he might be able to outpoint Wahid. Right? But understand, if you're going to fight that kind of ambush fight, you can't run too much because if you do, fans will be turned off like they are these days with Shakur Stevenson. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. We're just guys talking about fights, throwing out our two cents. 
I hope you leave your two cents in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me also say too, in this video, uh, I know I'm trying something new here with an avatar. Um, if you have comments on this avatar, leave them in the comment section of this video. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for stopping by.